Um, so I've been learning concurrency for like three weeks now. Um, and uh, so just take this with a total grain of salt. I know literally nothing about concurrency. But here are some of the quotes that I've heard that uh, were interesting to me. Um, so the first one is about, uh, in sequential, you try and minimize the number of steps, right? But in parallel or concurrent programming, it's OK to waste CPU or memory in order to minimize communication. So I thought that was totally fascinating, that difference. Um, and you see it kind of when you look at it like Sidekick, you have to pass in a whole bunch of extra parameters, right? Um, but that's OK, because we're doing multi um, this was This is kind of similar from the Golang community. Uh, don't communicate by sharing memory, share memory by communicating. It's like a little tiny tweak on how we think about the world. Um, and it's sort of the same way, like pass that state around instead of using shared memory or variables, um, which you can do in threaded Ruby, but uh, maybe it'd be better to do it through communication. So that was a fascinating thing. Um, so here's some dumb things that I should have known, but didn't. Uh, so the, uh, <laughs> the performance cost of using threading has to be greater than the performance benefit, which sounds so dumb, right? Um, but I, I didn't know this. <laughs> so I spent probably two and a half of those last three weeks going back and forth and trying to figure out why, uh, once I got Rubinius and JRuby running, which was a little time itself, um, why all of my code was three times slower. Um, but it's because the, the thing I was doing in there, the amount of work per thread was like minuscule. It did not, the performance benefit, or, or the performance cost greatly exceeded the benefit. So uh, alternate phrase of this is the work done in the thread, which I hadn't been thinking about, has to exceed the cost of the thread. And so this is like whole mind opener for me, which is so like such a small thing. Um, the other thing is that it turns out that more than 10,000 threads is not ideal. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, and especially since generally you, you have like one thread per core, and I don't have a 10,000 core machine. So, um, so it sounds silly, but I was doing the actor model where it creates one thread per object. And I was trying to make a two million object game. So it's just like, yeah, let's go for this. <laughs> it did not work out. Um, but I still haven't found a great solution for it. So uh, the current solution seems to be abandoned the actor model, but I think that's wrong. Elixir? Elixir, yeah, that is actually probably the end idea. Um, this was also a really cool idea. This, it was written better in the original, but I wanted to bulletize it. Um, so the idea was, because concurrency is costly, yeah, um, and you need to, to get that benefit to work ratio sorted out, um, pick the first one in this list that works for you. Um, so sequential, yeah, actually that turns out to be the fastest thing for me so far. <laughs> um, probably because I'm doing it wrong, but we'll see. Um, parallel collections, it's like map, but on multiple threads. Super easy, uses a pool of threads, it's great. Um, futures are like promises, but I'm not sure how they're different. Uh, so <laughs> we'll figure that out. Um, stateless actors, that makes no sense to me at all. Stateful actors are like objects, um, except everything you do with them is asynchronous, which is pretty cool. Except this stuff in the object, which is synchronous. So this actually, that makes sense to me, finally. Um, threads with software transactional memory, that's some like voodoo. Uh, threads with explicit locking, I, no, I don't know what any of these things are. Threads without locking? What? Anyways, I don't know. Um, so the gems I've been playing with, uh, which I would highly recommend you play with, uh, Celluloid has been super fun. Um, there's a thing that nobody seems to be talking about, but I think it's really cool. Celluloid notifications, it comes in core celluloid. And this gives you that like pub sub style, like I want to subscribe to this event, and then magically it comes out of nowhere and you do a thing. Um, so that's awesome. For par parallel collections, um, the celluloid person uh, popped a little like uh, snippet of how you would make parallel map. And so someone just wrapped that up and put it into a gem, um, which is great. But uh, it's parallel collections for Ruby. And then the last one is this concurrent Ruby, which I found after playing with a bunch of celluloid. 
um, is actually what every concurrent thing in Ruby seems to be written on, including cellular. And it includes its own actor model, its own parallel collections, its own like everything that I listed on, on this slide. It's all in there. And I don't understand any of it, but it is all there, so that's kind of <laughs> cool. Um, so the moral of the story is I have a lot to learn, and I hope this helped you in some small way. Thank <laughs> you.